Welcome everybody to the regular meeting of the Parks Recreation Community Service for March 4th. Let's have a roll call. Commissioners Kahn? Here. Rob Fogel? Present. Sharkey? Here. Bennett? Here. President Ward? Here. The agenda for the March 4th, 2009 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall and on the City of Glendale's website on Thursday, February 26, 2009 at 1 p.m. Item 2, Commission Staff Comments. you want to start with uh, any state of the department? Um, just briefly, um, I don't know if you all watched last night. The City Council did take the quarterly budget adjustments um, report from the um, city's finance director and part of that included six positions that we had vacant positions that were eliminated uh, one building repair position one senior gardener one office assistant uh, for Gary section um, two community services uh, employees uh, one at the adult recreation center who would have been there for the new adult recreation center uh, one for the youth outreach program and uh, Anna's old position, which was the office office manager position, so those were eliminated, not just frozen, but eliminated from the position from the department, um, along with a number of other um, eliminated positions from other departments. But just to let you know that six. Is that positions, in this this fiscal year. Or that's in this fiscal year. This this is in addition to five we lost at the beginning of the fiscal year. So for we have a total of eleven positions that we've eliminated in this fiscal year so far. Um, so at some point we will start feeling the impact of the loss of those positions. So just to let you know that that's what happened recently. Um, and we're not sure where it goes from here. I'm, I'm, I assume there may be another round of cuts. I don't know. It just depends on, on the economy and the state and, and how the city does in terms of revenue. Right. So that would be my update. Would the next round of cuts be the next fiscal year, starting? I the believe next so. Year? Yeah, and it wouldn't be before then. No, it wouldn't be before then. Um, but we'll start looking at it before the next fiscal year. But it, it right. could be that's July, July, July one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the programs for the spring and summer are going to either. Right now, there's no adjustments to the programming as far as you believe. You no, there are no adjustments, although uh, Brittany will tell you we're having a little bit of problems with the sponsorships of the um, concerts and the uh, the movies. You know, uh, unlike prior years, the, the sponsorships have, are starting to dry up because of the economy. We're still going to try to do six, I believe, concerts? Uh, five. five. Five concerts. Five. Okay. Uh, but we'll see where it goes. Even Jamba Juice, their support, they're still supporting it, but not quite like they did last year and prior right. years. So there may be some impact. Well, that's the news of the country right now is mm -hmm. working with the budgets. Yes. And that doesn't seem to be exclusive to just our department. Several nonprofit organizations have expressed that they're having some troubles getting donations or sponsorships as well. In fact, our Kiwanis car show that we typically have every year in the park has called us to cancel their event due to lack of sponsorships. Well, that so. would be a big change. Wow. Yeah, we did. I think Dave and I talked. Dave serves on the Aquanas, and, and we're going to try to do whatever we can to see if we can bring them back, um, right. if we co-sponsor it and reduce the cost, see if we can bring them back maybe in June or, or so in the summertime. But we're going to try to get that back. We'd hate to lose that. That's no. been an annual 13, 14 years now. Um, yeah. Is any way they could partner? They do partner with a show and brand on. Um, yes, with the cruise night, they come out night. and sell uh, burgers and, burgers and everything. But it's not their event. No. no. For the concerts in the park and the movies in the park, can you email us the sponsorship levels? Maybe we can help find some sponsors. Absolutely. I'll be happy to do that. And one of the concerts... Um, this year will be performed by a Vertigo Swing Society who uh, does provide services free of charge because we, uh, in exchange for use of uh, one of our spaces at Griffith Manor for their practices, and um, then we've also applied for an uh, L.A. County Arts Grant for one of the other concerts, which we've been informed that we had more likely uh, than not going to be able to get. So we're really shooting for sponsors for three concerts total and then the remainder of the uh, movie series at this point. And that is typically 100% funded by sponsorships, so it would be very okay. difficult to offer if we don't get any sponsors. Okay. 
Do you? Sorry for the negative comments. Yeah. I do. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, we, the last time we met, there was talk about different projects, and I know we'll eventually get to that um, in terms of funding being frozen or, or put on, on hold. Has anything changed at all since over the last month since we last met on the project? Not yet. Issue? Uh, the uh, the Duke Majin Barn project was frozen because of the state grant. Um, that was, I think, $1.2 million or so. The Riverwalk project is, is frozen right now because that's a $1.3 million state grant that's been frozen. Um, pool? The pool has been affected by the freeze as well. That was $1.4 million in state grants. Um, other than that, the uh, Adult Recreation Center has county grants, so that's still moving forward. Okay. Um, and the Cedar project doesn't have grants. We're using CDBG money, so that's moving forward as well. Okay. So it's just those three projects that are impacted. Great. And, and we don't know an update yet, so, but as soon as we do, Mark's staying on top of it. Um, as soon as we find out, we'll let you know. Okay. Thanks. Other comments? No. Okay. Next item, go into uh, oral communications. Item three, oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The director may refer the matter to the proper section for investigation and report. Um, okay, I've got, let's see, quite a few. Um, let's start with Rick Sam Saminka. Yeah. Parking will leave the park. Okay. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> my name is uh, Rick Samkian. I'm here on behalf of my friend Vigen Hanlarian. I am one of his students and uh, uh, I uh, visit frequently the tennis court since 15 years. Uh, we had uh, uh, quite a bit uh, of problems uh, with regard to parking spaces. Uh, my experience is that uh, I have been several times forced to park outside the parking space uh, which was uh, 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 dedicated to the tennis courts and parked next to the neighbors uh, driveways and the properties and been uh, personally humiliated uh, uh, publicly uh, been uh, complained to the neighbors that we are not uh, supposed to park there and uh, even they uh, was going to call the tow, tow truck to uh, to our uh, cars uh, uh, with other words uh, we have quite a bit problems here with the parking lot uh, since the improvement of the playground that attracts more people to do their barbecues and stays in the in the uh, whole uh, weekends uh, especially Sundays and spend time with uh, a huge amount of uh, 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 cars that they bring with them with themselves so uh, this is the situation the what we, we suggest, we have some proposals uh, that uh, maybe you sh uh, could take in consideration, uh, which is to expand the parking spaces for the baseball players and baseball visitors, uh, which we see there are some spots that you could uh, dedicate that to their parkings, that they don't use our parkings, or with other words, the tennis players, that they use their very limited parkings for them, that uh, just... Uh, uh, transfer this uh, amount of cars to that areas if it is possible. The one is going to be uh, next to the uh, Verdugo Road. There is a. Uh, can you see? Yes. And and west north side of the road there is a, a room. Here it shows very nice uh, landscaping trees and so which in reality is not that case. You know, if you send somebody there and assess the situation, they can see some uh, possibilities here. Another possibility is next to the chain link. Again, here the drawing shows very nice uh, landscaping, and uh, anybody sees that uh, in the first place, they're gonna, uh, uh, they will be against this uh, this proposal. So, whatever I suggest to get out there and see. Uh, if we could uh, fit some uh, parking spaces even on the north uh, corner of Verdugo and La Cañada Way, there is another possibility to fit some parking spaces. 
So anyway, to get rid of this congestion and uh, this situation that uh, creates a lot of problems with the neighbors too, I understand these neighbors too. You know, and uh, sometimes we park next to the driveway, then uh, we block the driveway. And it's dark and you don't see, you can't uh, you know, estimate what's going on there. Okay. Um, we are going to be handling on our uh, business agenda uh, uh, regarding the concession on the tennis. And uh, we're going to we'll consider that when we move forward with those proposals. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's something that does need to be looked at. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> the Excuse next me, did you, um, did he mention how many he thought would be helpful? How many parking places? Uh, a double as, as whatever is double right it? now. Double as whatever Sorry, is right now that? next to the tennis court. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Sure. This is the first I've heard of this. I had some email this morning uh, on my email. I've never had a call about this problem. The, the only other issue is we can certainly take a look at it. This sits on a reservoir, so you just right. can't put parking anywhere you want. You'd have to work with water and power, and, and we're on a reservoir. With, yeah, what's yeah. on solid ground, what's right. not on right. cover. Yeah. Okay, those things we can look at. All right, let's uh, Elaine Miller. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Elaine Miller with All About You Wellness Boot Camp, and I'm here on behalf of the Glendale Downtown Dash Planning Committee. Along with me is Mari Abrams, Chair of our committee, and she's Director of Marketing at Glendale Adventist Medical Center, and Ranger Rick Eric is with us as well. Um, the Glendale Downtown Dash is this Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, um, March 8th, and um, I would first like to acknowledge and thank the Parks Department for helping us with the logistics of setting up a training program. For the past eight weeks, we've been training about 100 members of our community to get in shape for the um, 5K race. We've been meeting at the Chess Park and um, meeting there to warm up and stretch and then running um, the course, uh, the practice course. And especially we would like to thank Ranger Eric for getting that park in shape for us, cleaning it up, setting up uh, no smoking signs and that kind of thing so that it really helped out to make it a beautiful place to um, get this training started. And now I'd like to turn it over to Mari who will tell you a little bit more about the dash race this coming Sunday. Um, we have some small packets for the commissioners here. It's just, it's actually a t-shirt from last year. We're just getting in the t-shirts <laughs> for this year. <laughs> We have had an amazing response to this downtown dash. We've having people come up to the community, um, come up to us from the community, telling us how important this event is to them. Last year, at the end of the event, we had 750 registrations. People participate in the event. This year, we're already up to 800, and we have we still have a couple days left for registrations. It's just amazing. We have over 33 teams um, of people who are supporting this event, and we have an amazing list of sponsors. We've had people join this community um, this community um, campaign we have um, the Americana has come on board and the route now includes a run through the Americana KLOS has lent their support to our program KABC has lent their support to our program the Glendale News Press has been just an amazing supporter you wouldn't believe how fantastic they've been um, of course Dave and his team the redevelopment agency everyone has just been so amazing um, to make this happen Elaine um, from all about you wellness boot camp has just done amazing things with a hundred people who don't run including me she's made us run for 45 minutes an hour at a time it's unbelievable um, hopefully you see this as a great use of the city property and city time we'll be closing Brand Boulevard um, is where the majority of the route is this Sunday the race itself starts at 7 a.m. it's daylight savings so it's a real great reason to dash ahead um, 7 a.m. is the registration, 8 o'clock is the opening ceremonies, 8.15, Elaine is going to lead us in a great uh, warm-up, and 8.30, our race starts. We actually have elite runners who are coming to this event um, to train for other marathons that are going on after ours, so this has really become a fantastic opportunity. Uh, I really want to thank you all. Um, the downtown merchants have been unbelievable in making this happen. Glendale Arts opened up the Alex Theater so we could use funds from last year's event to reinvest in the community 
community. And we brought in a speaker this last Monday to talk about stroke and stroke services um, on a national level. She's actually um, one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People. Uh, for 2008, she was interviewed on Oprah, and she herself had a stroke when she was 37. Um, she's a neuroanatomist, and she just found it fascinating that someone who knew and understood the brain was actually having this condition, a stroke, happen to her. So it was amazing. We filled the Alex Theater, and it was just a fantastic event and opportunity to educate people about health and wellness. So a huge thank you, and I'm not sure if Park Ranger Eric has oh, thank you. <laughs> anything we want to turn it back over to Elaine. Okay, and finally, we would love to invite the entire community out to participate in this dash, and especially the commissioners. Um, we'd love to have you come out with us. 5K, for anybody who doesn't know, is 3.1 miles. You can walk or run it, so it's very achievable for all of us. So come out and support the uh, dash, support our stroke services for our community. Um, we are also having a health um, fair right after, so that goes until 2 o'clock. So there will be lots of great information for an entire community. There. Thank you so much for your time and attention. A couple of questions? Yes. Uh, first of all, a friend of mine has a team, uh, Team Gavin. Yes, Team Gavin is amazing. They are amazing. Uh, Rick Dinger's son uh, is Gavin, and uh, they've named the team after him. And I'm sure that anyone that calls Rick or uh, anybody else can, like I have, sponsored either Team Gavin or an another team. How would they do that? Sure, the easiest and best way to do it is to go to glendaledowntowndash.com and from there there are really quick and easy links to um, another website which is active.com and you can make uh, donations directly through there using a credit card. Um, if, you have, if you want to do checks um, or cash, you would want to bring that the day of the event or call the Healthcare Foundation at Glendale Adventist uh, and we can process the money that way. Okay. And the health fair afterwards, what location will that be? Sure. The health fair is actually on the 200 block of Brand Boulevard. Okay. Um, and we have actually 70 booths. We have uh, over a dozen free health screenings for the community. We just thought it was a very important thing, especially in this economy, to be able to offer those everything from um, glucose and cholesterol to stress screenings and blood pressure um, will be there also. Um, and the community, uh, we have a lot of community vendors who have requested to be a part of this Healthy Living Expo from 10 to 2. I'm not sure how the weather is supposed to be for Sunday, but I'm guessing rain or shine, you're going to do this? <laughs> we are. We keep checking it, I think, by the hour. We started with a 10-day forecast um, seven days ago now, I think it was. And uh, it said sunny and 62. I checked it on Monday. It said it was maybe going to rain. I checked it yesterday. It said partly cloudy. And then when we checked it about two hours ago, it said it was going to rain today, tomorrow, and Saturday, not on Sunday, and then again on Monday. <laughs> but, rain but rain or shine, rain or shine will be there. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Run in the rain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? No. Thank you very much. Thanks. Sounds Chairman like Ward? Day. Yes, Dave. Um, our department, the Parks Department, is sponsoring the water stop, uh, which will be here at Glendale Avenue and Broadway. And so this would be an opportunity for the commissioners that don't want to run a 5K to come join staff at the water stop. Starbucks is one of our sponsors, shockingly, <laughs> and for those that know me. Um, and um, so if any of the commissioners that would like to come and, and uh, assist us with the race, we'll be staffing the water stop right here at, at Glendale Avenue and Broadway. And although Ranger Eric does do a fabulous job, we have to credit Gary and his staff with a lot of the work at, at the Chess Park to posting the signs power washing and helping to clean that place up. What time should we be here if we can uh, help with the water station? Um, the the race will start at 8.30, so we'd need you at the water stop somewhere around 8 o'clock, a little bit before. Um, the volunteers will be gathering anywhere from 5 a.m. on. Um, Good for them. With, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we would, we would invite you but not expect you at the 5 a.m. call. <laughs> Um, but I think if, if you join us at, at 8 a.m. here at Glendale Avenue, um, you'd be able to help us with the water stop if you have time and if you're so inclined. Okay. okay. Um, I don't believe there's any more public comments that aren't pertaining to an action item, so unless, uh, so why don't we move on? Item 4A, approval of the minutes of the commission regular meeting held on February 4th, 2009. Have you had a chance to review it? Yes. Is there a motion to move forward? 
I'd make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second it. Okay, roll call. Commissioners Kahn? Yes. Rob Fogel? Yes. Sharkey? Yes. Bennett? Yes. President Warren? Yes. Okay, uh, move on, business agenda. Under our business agenda, uh, item 5A1, proposed fees for 2009 tennis concessionaire RFP. And um, I will let Brittany uh, continue with this um, okay. item. Uh, Commissioner Ward, uh, President Ward, and members of the commission, you'll find this report uh, mirrors the same information that you saw last month. We have not made any updates or changes to the uh, proposed fees. Uh, in fact, uh, continued discussion amongst the participants and vendors. The only feedback that we have received regarding these fees has been a request to potentially um, round up the fees to the nearest whole dollar to assist the concessionaires. Other than that, uh, the participants themselves don't seem to have a problem with the uh, small increase that we're proposing, um, which would be a day rate of, um, excuse me, a weekdays would be $4 per quart per hour. That would be from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Evenings, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., going to 5.50 per hour. Weekdays, uh, or excuse me, weekends, Saturday, Sunday, 7 a.m., all day, 5.50 an hour. And then anyone who was utilizing the course for tennis instruction would pay the $7 per hour court rate, and that would be assessing a higher fee because if they're instructing tennis, they're more often than not charging fees for the tennis instruction. So Joanne is here today to answer any additional questions you may have, as well as um, I'm here. Um, but other than that, these fees are the same fees that we discussed last month, no change. No change. Okay. Um, any comments? Now, you talked about uh, 50, 50 cents going up on what fee would be I believe that um, the discussion that we've had um, includes our um, concessionaires who operate the courts have um, recently mentioned that they would like to see the 550 rate rounded up to the nearest whole dollar so that they didn't necessarily have to deal with change for ease of monetary transactions that would assist In the them. evening and weekend rate yeah. also? Okay. Um, everything else would remain. Anything that is a whole dollar rate for the four dollar rate, the seven dollar hour would remain. It would just be that five fifty, making it around at six dollars. Okay. And at the commission's discretion, we could simply just change the motion to reflect that if you so, if you saw fit to do so. Okay. Comments. What What does staff think about that? About rounding up. When you want to come up? I don't think uh, internally for us. Um, that extra 50 cents would necessarily, um, obviously any further increase would benefit our department. Um, but I would like to Joanne to at least speak if she's heard any other comments from the actual participants themselves versus the vendors. Sure. No, it's just change is difficult to do, but, but there would be no impact to us as far as staffing. Yeah. Because we deal directly with the vendor. Well, the vendor is actually collecting the fees right. and then the Correct. Payment. Right. And it's a monthly. It's monthly that they uh, give the department a, a check with the report. Come. Okay. Okay. First, I want to thank staff for all the work they put into this. I know it was grueling. Four months. <laughs> Four months. Uh, your presentation last time, going from individual to court fees, and resident to not resident, not where I'm very comfortable with. With the end result that you came up with, I think the participants are too. Good. Yeah, I think the compromise is good. On the tennis instruction, that does not matter how many students; it's just straight instruction, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. We have speakers. Yes, we do. We have quite a few. Um, um, we have a motion. We start out with Margaret. Yeah, Speak on this. I'm kind of coming. My name is Margaret Hammond. Margaret Hammond. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I got persuaded to come up here by a certain commissioner. I was on my way home, as I said, um, and you wouldn't have to put up with me, but he convinced me that I needed to come. And and, uh, and there were a couple of items on here that I really did want to address. Number one, um, would it be possible, which park is it that they're talking about uh, making the parking uh, space for the baseball larger. Does that mean that would be taken out of the park area, out of the green area then? 
Um, I believe they're referring to Glorietta. Glorietta. Right. Okay, and I'll get a. I'll get, I'd like to get a map and have a look at that. I'm, I'm always against uh, adding uh, more parking, more pavement, more cement. You sure you've heard me screeching about <laughs> Pacific Park, which is a nemesis to me, and I just cannot see putting any more cement or pavement or anything in what should be a green area. Uh, I think we need as much green area as we can. And I'm horrified at the City Council, by the way, uh, not at the City Council, but at City Council was brought up putting in artificial turf. And the gentleman that brought it thought it was absolutely beautiful and gorgeous and uh, whatever, and I went like, uh-oh, uh, I can see us with plastic turf uh, on our front lawns or whatever. <laughs> uh, the other thing I would like to ask, and of course to me, I still say we need the ground, we need the dirt. For oxygen in our world, uh, I think with all the smog and whatever we have uh, circulating, we need as much uh, green in our world as we can get. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask is how are these concessionaires picked? Who? I, I guess I'm coming in late on this, and maybe I ought to be asking outside of this particular uh, venue uh, how the concessionaires are picked. Uh, or is there a bidding process to be uh, looked at and so forth on that? Okay. Uh, I personally don't think it would be right to increase the fares, I mean the fees in any way. I have friends that play tennis, a lot of them seniors, and it may not seem like 50 cents is anything, but you pay a couple of hours or, you know, three, four times a week, whatever they play, and it adds up. And like everything else, like... <laughs> our electric and our water, and they say, oh, don't worry about it, it's not any big thing, but out of somebody that's on a limited income, it is. It becomes a problem, 50 cents here, a couple bucks there. So I don't know that I think that's, uh, especially if it's the, you know, not necessary. I mean, if we're meeting our, our uh, expenses or whatever we need to be meeting uh, on that, and uh, that it would be necessary to increase it even by 50 cents. I mean, on Say it was five dollars and or five fifty, then fifty cents is ten percent increase, and in in this uh, economic, I, I don't think it's very good, because it's one of the few things where we can use our parks and not if you can't afford other entertainment or other, and it's healthy, it's for the health reason. Okay, I think on that, that's more or less. I will ha I will get a copy of that uh, park. I'd like to see what is being uh, suggested as to. Uh, that the landscaping ain't so hot or whatever, well, hello. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe it is and maybe it isn't, but never, nevertheless, it's green and uh, should be maintained in my thoughts. But uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Just real quick clarification for you, Margaret. We're really only talking about two parks, Fremont Park and Glorietta Park, and the other parks are all free. And... Aren't some of the parks, aren't some of the courts at um, Fremont also free? Or uh, actually, uh, Commissioner Rockfogel, no. The all of the courts at Fremont Park and at uh, Gloria. Gloria Park are perf are, are you have to utilize them by paying a fee. Um, and as you as you also brought up, there are a number of other parks. Uh, exhibit two of your report. Um, details a list of all of the parks and the tennis court facilities, uh, the number of courts at those facilities, which ones have lights, which ones do not, and which ones are free and which ones are um, by uh, use by fee. Right. Also, it's it's evening <clears throat> and weekends, and seniors, I would think, would have the time to, or hope, would have the time during the week where we wouldn't be racing at the 50. Right. Cents. It's, affordable. So it's, it's affordable. It's uh, in fact, I think the majority of senior users tend to use it early morning yes. hours. So that it they would be, be paying exactly. the lower rate for the it would be the four dollar per hour rate that they would be paying. So we wouldn't be jumping it up for seniors necessarily. Correct. On weekends or evenings. The, the, the other thing to keep in mind is typically these are doubles players, so there's four people on a court. So these fees are divided by four per person. So if it's a raise of a dollar, then per person it's really a raise of a quarter. So. Good point. Correct. This is also a fee structure that's been put in place approximately nine, ten years ago, right. and the vendors still have to do do the business, and they have expect we have expectations of them to conduct business. So it's been a long time that the fee has been increased, and that was why that 
what is it? In fact, it has been uh, 2002, 13 years ago. 13, 13 same years fees. since we've raised fees. Right. Okay. All right, we have another speaker, um, the vendor at or Vegan Kalarian. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Vigen Kandarian, and I'm a winder, uh, Central Park and Gloria Park also. So I'm here just uh, request for the red off that 50 cents because it's a problem for us, just like we are in a grocery, just go for the change and that's it. We go up a little bit like uh, $5 or whatever, it's, that's very convenient for us. Okay. You also had a speaker's card regarding some of the lights. Is that the same yes. issue? Yes. Uh, Address that at yeah, this time. Our lights in the Glorieta Park, we have a very problem with the lights because the light is like the flashlights is, a, is not the tennis light. And uh, it's April 5th. It's, it's going to be demolished off the Central Park. That's why I'm requested to bring the lights, the, the, that the tennis lights from Central Park to Gloria the Park, and that's uh, like a recycling for the city. And uh, you can use the uh, Gloria the Park lights for the baseball field because it's the same as uh, baseball field lights. Because if you play in a light, uh, nights in the Gloria the Park, we have a big problem with lights because it's just like a flashlight, it goes a straight one space. Okay, so I think. If I understand, you're talking about using the fixtures when they renovate Central Park. Correct. Yes. Will it be enough for the? Well, there's probably well, there's something you have to Yes, look it's, it's just four courts four four. in Central Only Park, four courts, four courts in the Gloria okay. Park. It's the same as okay. the Central Park. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Well, we'll take a look at that also with the cost that is, to do that. We'll have to look and see if they'll match. Well, yeah. right, the fittings may be right. a problem. Maybe, yeah, cost maybe installing yeah. those. Okay, that's something to look into. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Thank you for the idea. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, so we have lights there now. Right. <clears throat> yes. 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 And, yes. And so what he's wanting is it he wants lights to change. be brighter. He wants more well, light. Yeah. They're, they're, wants they're floodlights, and I suspect they cause a problem in seeing as opposed to regular tennis lights. I think I suspect as, as you hit the and ball. Glorietta has a different fixture than right. up. But right, yeah. Glorietta has I'm more sorry. of a baseball in the central big spotlights. Uh, I see. That's not the way tennis lights are. Okay, those are things we'll look at. Look, yeah, something to look into. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Okay, um, that's all the speakers I have on that um, item. Is there some discussion we'd like to have on that regarding the 50 cent fee or the proposal sure. as it stands? Yeah, go ahead. I'll move uh, 5A1 changing the 50, 550 fee to 550 fees to $6. Do you, there's a motion in your packet that you might want to consider using the wording the last of an ad. You have to read that, is what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't come up with your own motion. <laughs> right. And then maybe oh. add what you just said. Okay, I move that the Parks, Recreation, and Community Service Commission hereby adopt the proposed fee schedule uh, for the 2009 tennis concessionaire request for proposal changing the 550 fees to six dollars yeah that amending that yeah. commissioners con well, I'd, I'd, I'd sec i'd second, second. That. <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay okay now roll call please. okay commissioners con yes rot fogel yes sharkey yes bennett yes and president Worth. yes i agree that's a good move all right thank you let's go to the next item okay item 5b1 under reports for information only, monthly activity reports, recreation and community services. Uh, and I will be brief this month with my report as we have several CIP project updates I believe staff want to update you on. Um, what you'll see in this month's report is a comparison of our um, number of registrations for our softball tournaments. Um, what you're seeing is a slight increase in generated profit and uh, participation this past year, which is good news given the status of the economy. Um, also, our breakdown of our monthly um, permits for the use of public parks for picnics, uh, et cetera. Ever since we've regained the use of both Glen Oaks and Dunsmore Clubhouse, uh, we've 
again, seeing those Coming revenues increasing. So that's very good news. Um, and it hasn't really been long enough for us to be able to test the waters of the civic auditorium fees. However, staff has mentioned to me that they have gotten several uh, calls from local nonprofits, very interested good. in the new rates. How do I request right. a room? Are these dates available, et cetera? So um, very anxious to see how, how that moves forward. Yeah, so. get the civic going again. I had a question for you about um, the softball tournament report. Yes. And it talked about how there's, uh, I guess there's two softball tournaments offered annually, and it's held over a two-day weekend, it says, on five fields. And this year these tournaments generated a profit of $11,400. Is there consideration or is there a, a need to expand that so that you would have it more than twice a year, possibly four times a year, or six times a year? It seems to be profitable, and it seems that if you're getting that much activity, maybe there's a need there. Is there some consideration for that? Uh, Commissioner Khan, yes, uh, absolutely. In fact, Gabrielle Winter, who is our um, sports supervisor, has expressed to me that both she and Joanne, one of the things that came out of our previous uh, or last year's experience with the even the youth sports groups and their um, desire to potentially hold some tournaments they've been looking more and more into um, offering additional tournaments not just for adults but for kids as well uh, we've even seen some interest from uh, Joanne's done a nice job working with the college potentially some of the colleges may want to put together some college level tournaments um, They've worked with uh, some of the local hotels, see if they can work out some group rates uh, and see what kind of packages they can put together for sports teams, et cetera. So they are looking into and pursuing that as additional revenue since there does seem to be a demand for sure. it. Sure. Good. These are basically hosted at the sports center? Up uh, at the sports complex on all fields and then at Gloria Park and Montrose fields whenever they need to expand to additional locations. And I believe now that Shoal Ball Field is up and running, they may look at that as a potential location as long as it doesn't conflict with the other users. Yeah, I know there's a lot of club teams and stuff that move sure. around. And they bring along a lot of people with them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Help all the businesses. Great. Any other comments? Thanks. That that was going to be part of my question. So great minds think alike, obviously. <laughs> but what do we do them for other sports like soccer? And uh, do we do other types types of tournaments, soccer, tennis, that kind of thing? We have hosted um, soccer tournaments. Typically, our leagues, the AOSO and Home Minutemen leagues, have put together those tournaments. Uh, and again, we have uh, working with them on the various subcommittees that have broken out since the youth sports group fee discussion. Right. Again, they have expressed potentially seeing if they can break out some additional tournaments. I believe that they used to just offer an annual tournament. Now they have two tournaments. Uh, Gabrielle stepped out of the room, but that was one of the things we were discussing the other day, and they may look into again. I think soccer is so popular that... <laughs> Yeah, we they would love to have as many fields. tournaments as they could. It, it ends up coming down to field uh, space and time availability uh, and making sure that we're not overlapping into anyone's practice time uh, or game time, essentially. But we're definitely pursuing uh, that. But we'll have to take a look at, if it's not our tournament, maybe increasing the fees for tournament for the fields. Outside tournaments. Sure. Con yeah. Con yeah. We make some money as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, those synthetic sure. fields will yeah, definitely work well. I have a couple of just technical questions. Is this slow, slow pitch, I assume, not fast pitch, the, term, the baseball tournament? I would assume tournament. so, I think it yes. was. I'd have to double-check with okay. Gabrielle. Yeah. These days, not the that room. many people play fast it's pitch. Just, but yeah, it's okay. co it is co-ed. Uh, one, is, one is and one isn't. Well, there's, isn't there a tournament that's, I assume, all male that's... Thank you for stepping in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed the question. I apologize. We're what talking about the sports. Yeah, I just asked whether is it slow pitch or fast pitch. It's or slow they, pitch the adults. Slow pitch. We yeah. have um, men's co-ed and women's. We have one night of women's league only. We have two nights of um, co-ed leagues, and then the rest of the nights of the week are men's. Okay. And who who's the umpire? Is it the our folks, or do they provide an umpire? Um, we have uh, basically the umpires come from an outside um, contract. They okay. come in, okay. and the teams pay the umpires directly so they're not actually vendors to the city okay. of Glendale okay they okay. kind of work for the teams okay. I haven't seen results of this in the newspaper maybe that's me missing it but if if we're not working with the news press 
to get results in. I think we ought to because that just makes it more status. People get their picture in. More peak teams will come. They'll spend more money. Sure. Absolutely, sure. We yeah. can definitely contact the yeah. news press for our Would next season. I think they'd love uh, to put season. it in also. Yeah. yeah, we're just starting a season right now, so we can let them know that we're starting and um, have them pick up some of the um, advertisement for it and, and post the results of all of our tournaments at the end in the playoffs. Yeah, the comments from the commission were to expand it since it looks like it's a very profitable thing to do at it our is. sports complex. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. But, yeah, other questions? Thank you for the report. The next report. CIP Projects and Park Rangers. I'll turn us over to Dave Ahern, our Capital Project Administrator. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chepchen. Chairman Ward, members of the Commission, we have four uh, reports for you today, and we'll start with a report um, by Park Ranger Eric Grossman uh, and Jeff Weinstein. Um, we'll, we'll assist him with the report as well. Uh, they often work together on much of our campground, uh, camping, uh, hiking, and other programs. So, Eric? Good afternoon, Commission. Uh, recently, you might have heard back on the 15th of last month, there was a mountain lion sighting uh, I did. in the Verdugo Mountains. Um, it was a rather large cat. It's been here for a very long time. But when anybody hears or sees a mountain lion, they think the worst. So we thought it would be a good time to come today to talk about mountain lion sightings as well as trail safety seeing that summer's coming up and everyone's getting ready for this. But there are a few things that people need to be concerned about and when they're out there hiking. We're going to do a presentation here. Just some hiking advisories when you're out there. Know your limitations. Um, even though our trails are marked here in the city of Glendale, a lot of the rescues that we encounter are people who go beyond their limitations and they get stranded in areas they shouldn't be in. Uh, bring in a companion, never hike alone. We always emphasize that. It's very important that you do not hike alone. Stay on the trails. Uh, that goes along with know your limitations. All of our trails are marked. Uh, stay hydrated, drink plenty of water, protect yourself from the sun. These are all just basic hike hiking advisories uh, that you need to remember when you're out there. Um, Cell phones are really important, number seven. Bring a fully charged cell phone. Uh, on the rescues that I've been on, we've had two last month, uh, the cell phones died out when we were talking to the people uh, where they're located. So if you're going to go hiking, it's important to bring your cell phone and have it charged uh, so we can locate you. And, of course, absolutely no smoking, no campfires in our hillsides and in the emergency dial 911. The city of Glendale is able to get a GPS coordinates of where you are when you activate your cell phone. So even if you don't know where you are, we're able to get the coordinates from GPS and zero in just within a few meters from where you're at. Hiking essentials, a map of the area. If you go to the Glendale website, Parks and Recreation's website, you'll be able to get the updated map of the Verdugo Mountains, the San Gabriel Mountains. Um, have a compass with your GPS. A lot of people do the geocaching, they have those with them. A flashlight, extra food and water, clothing, uh, first aid kit, again, a cell phone, and proper footwear is very important. If you're hiking in the mountains, you don't want to go in high heel shoes or flip flops or something like that. You want to bring proper tennis shoes. Stay on designated trails. Again, the, the rescues that we've had were people going off on trails where they shouldn't have gone off. Uh, because of the rains, we have a lot of runoffs. They look like trails, and people assume that they can hike down those, and they're not trails. Or we have what we call deer trails uh, made by the deer, and people think they're designated hiking trails, and they use those. So just stay on the marked boundary areas. Uh, contact with wildlife. Uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of more wildlife seen this year because of the unseasonal weather we've been having. There's going to be a lot more wildlife coming out earlier this year. Uh, if you do see the wildlife, absolutely don't approach them try to pet them if they come up close. We do have people that try to do that. Oh. Observe them from afar. And, uh, yeah, missing fingers. Uh, definitely don't feed the wildlife. Uh, we were having some issues in the beginning at Brown Park, people feeding the coyotes, but we put an end to that, and the coyote population has now moved back up in the hillside. And don't harass or disturb. When you antagonize the wildlife, they're more to provoke an attack on you. Uh, mountain lions. We live in prime mountain lion country. Uh, they're large uh, predators. Uh, they live mostly on deer and small game uh, for food. And again, they're, you know, they can be dangerous. 
Uh, it's a very rare that a mountain lion will attack somebody, very rare. Uh, I believe from in the last, I think it was uh, 70 years or 80 years, there's only been 10 mountain lion deaths, and that's including the United States and Canada. So it's very rare that someone gets attacked and gets killed. If you do encounter one, these are some of the things that we ask you to do. Face the lion and back away slowly. Do not run that way because he thinks you're prey and he'll attack. Be as large as you can. Put your arms up in the air. Uh, keep children close to you. Pick them up. Try not to bend down because when you bend down, it shows the lion that you are prey or you're being submissive. Um, and then if you are attacked, fight back. Mountain lions do not like controversy. Uh, they like a quick attack because, again, they're just looking for food. They're not there to attack you. They're there looking to, to eat. Um, and they want something simple. Who's who? We get calls all the time of mountain lion sightings. And when we go up there, we bring the pictures. And 99.9% .9 of the time, they pick bobcat on the side there. But the difference between the two lines is one, the mountain lion is much, much larger. It can range anywhere from 50 to 210 pounds as a full-grown male, adult. And their body length is up to 8 feet long when they stand, stand their hind legs. A bobcat is about the size of a collie. Uh, it's much larger, larger uh, I'm sorry, much chunkier than a, than a collie. It's got spots on it like a calico cat. And their ears are very pointed. As you can see, the mountain lion has a very large head and they're uh, tan, dark, dark colored tan. Rattlesnakes. Always getting calls of rattlesnakes on our, on our hiking trails as well as in homes. Again, do not touch them. People get interested in some of them and they want to touch them. That's when you get bit. Walk around the snake slowly. They will not attack you. People seem to think when rattlesnakes see you, they'll come after you, and that's not true. A lot of times you walk right past them and you'll never see them or hear them. Stay calm. Don't get excited and run because uh, if you're close enough and you startle the rattlesnake, It'll make them want to lunge out and, and bite at you. And again, um, don't use a stick to poke the rattlesnake. Some people say, well, I'll get a stick and move them out of the way. And sometimes the stick's maybe only six inches long. And they reach down there and, and they get zapped on the hand. So we don't want you to move the stakes or poke at them um, just to make sure that they don't bite you. Again, if you're bitten by a rattlesnake, we did have a bite uh, for the first time. The 14 years I've been here in the city of Glendale, this is the only second bite I've heard. In Glendale is a young man who was bit on the hand up at Bram Park. Uh, luckily, it wasn't a bad bite. Not much venom was uh, introduced into his system. But stay calm. Uh, immediately seek medical attention. Again, dial 911. Uh, do not cut open the wound. As we heard in the past, we used to have those old first aid classes, cut the wound open. We don't do that anymore. Do not use a tourniquet for obvious reasons because it will shut off the blood flow to the lower limbs. Again, don't suck out the venom. We always see that in the movies, and we don't do that because now you're taking the venom into your mouth or the person that's, that's taking the venom out, and you start getting it into your system. And use cold packs. That will slow down the, the progression of, of the venom. And again, if you get bit by a rattlesnake, it's not what you see in the movies. You don't drop over dead immediately. It's a very long, progressive uh, poison that goes through your system, venom that goes through your system, oh, and it's very treatable. And who's who in rattlesnakes? Uh, on the right is a gopher snake. Uh, and on the left is the rattlesnake. Uh, the differences are pretty obvious when you see them. Light-colored gopher snakes, um, and their, their head to their toe, to their tails, excuse me, they go, will go from dark to light. Uh, a rattlesnake, depending on his age, can turn black. You may see black rattlesnakes out there. If they're younger, they look a lot like a gopher snake. Um, I'm showing you these pictures just to get an idea of what they both look like, but again, if you're not sure, um, Again, don't touch them. The interesting thing about gopher snakes is that they will rattle their tails in the leaves to make, they, make you think that they are a rattlesnake. So a lot of times you'll hear that rattle in the, it's just them rattling their tails. And with that, we would just like to let everybody know have a great time in our hillsides. Our, our trails are maintained beautifully. Uh, we should have great uh, weather this year and just use these safety tips and you'll be okay. Thank you. I appreciate you the trail map that you gave us. <laughs> yeah. Other comments? Yes. Yeah, a couple questions. First of all, thank you for the for the education or re-education. I, I think it would be tough to kind of uh, not to panic if I encounter a mountain lion and try to act large, but I think I'd do my best. What about, what about like uh, the other two that you said, there's bobcats and coyotes. Is it the same type of thing when you encounter them on the trails, or is it different for each... 
Uh, well, with species, with bobcats, they're like very large domestic cats. Uh, rarely will they all attack uh, a person. They usually just run away when they see you. Whereas a mountain lion may stand his ground. Um, again, clapping your hands and yelling at it. Again, yeah, you're going to be nervous, so you're going to make a lot of noise probably. Right. So <laughs> it's going to it's going to run. Coyotes uh, generally attack in packs or they're in packs. Uh, it's rare that a coyote will come after people. Mainly when they do confront uh, people, it's when they're walking their dogs. And it's usually a territorial fight. Uh, but it's very rare that those will happen. So if you see one coyote, don't assume that's just one coyote. There could be others lingering around in the area. So the same thing, just make lots of noise, clap your hands, and they'll avoid you. Thank you. Yes. Um, two things. When you mentioned cell phone, to bring a cell phone, how is the reception up on our trails? Uh, they've improved that tremendously um there are not many there are a few dead zones up there but usually when you dial 911 our new system that's in place right now usually picks it up and even if it's a drop call uh the glendale police dispatch will zero in on where that call came from and dispatch dispatch us out or a police officer yeah i had the experience once on a fishing trip to alaska to um encounter a, a bear up there and it was uh, there were five of us, and it was it was very interesting. Yeah, the dead zone's where the mountain lion is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't help you in Alaska, but if you're here, yeah, no, but, but but yeah, I mean, you know, no running. <laughs> yeah. one of the guys for for a split second started to run, and we got him to stop. It wasn't me, but uh, we got him we got him to stop because sure. as soon as he started running, the bear started um, moving faster. Also. Yeah. And if I could just also enclose, if anyone does spot a mountain lion, to please call um, 548-2000 or the, or the police department 548-4940 and uh, report it. Because we need to report whether it is a documented sighting or a bobcat, we need to make sure that the mountain lion, if it is moving closer into the community, we need to make other steps, maybe call in the Department of Fishing Game. But right now this mountain lion is doing what it does. It's just enjoying the environment just like we are. And uh, eventually it will go back up in the hillside somewhere else. Thank you. Other comments? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. you for your presentation. Thanks. Commissioner Ward, or President Ward, yeah. the next uh, presentation is from Shahan Bagumian on the, uh, on the Griffith Manor Park uh, okay. update. And we'll be taking a plan to the council um, on March 17th, I believe. So. Shahin's our project manager on this, and as you know, um, Shahin does a terrific job in everything he does, so he'll give you the, the presentation today. Good afternoon, President Board and Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Shahin Begumian, and I'm here to give an, to give an update regarding uh, Griffith Manor Park project. Uh, as you all know, this park is located on 1551 Flower Street between Western and Sonora. On this image, uh, the picture uh, on the left, it shows uh, our existing site plan, and the image on the right, it shows what we're proposing for this park. Griffith Manor Park is approximately three acres in size and it's one of the oldest facilities which originally was acquired in 1937. This park has not seen any renovation or improvements for over 39 years and the existing facilities are significantly rotted and worn out. Uh, we had our third and final community meeting on February 21st and community suggestion and concerns has been incorporated in the concept plan and we are scheduled for the joint meeting of City Council and the Development Agency on March 17 for the approval of the project. Uh, on the new park, we are proposing the following uh, improvements. We are going to have a new 2,600 square feet of community building which will include green construction and uh, construction material and techniques. We will have a lighted uh, basketball court that was a request from community that we received. We are going to have a new lighted 16 car parking lot with interlocking uh, permeable pavers. We'll have a trash enclosure right in that parking area. We will have decorative steel fencing with rolling gates in front of the park. Uh, 
uh, we will have picnic areas throughout the park with shade canopies and each uh, picnic area will have their own barbecue and trash if it occurs. We'll have a water pad play area. This was a request from the community. We will have new tot lot with play equipment and sunshade. Again, the having a sunshade on top of that play equipment it was a request from the community. <laughs> and we are going to uh, expansion and enhancement of existing play area that we have right now. And we are going to have a lighted walkways and lighting throughout the park. To me, the most important uh, issue that came up during uh, the public meeting on February 21st was the crossing the street on Flower. And uh, probably, as you all know, due to the construction of a new off-ramp for the Western Avenue off of the I-5, uh, public works traffic, they're going to widen that uh, Flower Street. And the reason uh, that you see that basketball court, they, they're taking 40 feet of frontage of our park, and instead they gave us that property that we're putting the basketball court in there. But that Flower Street is going to be a wide street, so crossing for the kids and for the parents with the store is going to be a, you know, it's going to be an issue, which we are going to meet uh, public works traffic in the next couple of days to see how do they want to, you know, address this issue with the light, with the crossing lights, disco light, or some sort of something has to be done. But I don't have an answer for you right now. What? But something will be done. You want to add anything, or? No, oh, sir. No, sir. Okay, sir. <laughs> Let me ask you a quick question yes, before you move off that. There are two things. One, that area that's north of the basketball court, mm -hmm. yeah. that area there. It's a commercial. It's a commercial, it's a commercial properties. Okay. It's a, some businesses. So, so we got, for widening, we picked up yes, a exact, exact piece yes. where the basketball court is. Yes. Okay. And then I'm just trying to picture, because we have just a snapshot here, the street is being widened on a portion of the park, now, as you get further to the east, there's a bump out. Exactly. The bump out is because Roberta Street is right there, and we have to have that bump out so we can keep the integrity of that, that intersection, basically. There is. But the, where it's cut back, will you have par parallel parking there? Yes. Yeah. They, they don't have the property across the street. That's private property. Yeah. So the bump out is needed um, because this is where the street starts getting wider and then further down. I see. That's why the bump out, so that, to keep the in integrity of the... Uh, the intersection there. Yeah. So we're going to increase that. You're going to have a parking lot on the property, mm -hmm. which currently, and then also parallel parking out in the in the part of the street. That's correct. Yes. yes. On the bump out. For now, until I think maybe at a later phase, if Not they make diagonal the, parking, but parallel. Parallel parking. Yes. Right. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, Thank you for the permeable pavers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have to say right now we have probably what eight. Parking spots where we we're doubling that to, to about sixteen spaces. Yeah, that's that's yeah, the old currently, that's yeah. the old parking in the Parking's back. up here. And, and I'm sorry, and the building that we have there now, it looks like we have. This is yeah. a building, and this is a shade structure. Yeah. Pick, oh, pick, okay. Pick, yeah. And so, so the building then now will demolish, and then we'll build this new facility. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Is it about the same square footage as the old facility? Uh, well, the old facility, we used to have two buildings there. There was uh, one here before. One was there, which was in a bad shape. We demoed it a couple of years ago. And yeah. this one is about 2,300 square feet that we have. But the new one will be like 2,600 square feet plus or minus. Plus or minus. I think it's better to move the things back up to the mm -hmm. street, too, yeah, because that, too. everything in the back of the park was a collection. Right, and, and that was the intent. I think the neighbors said... People were hanging out back here behind the building. There was all kinds of shady activities going Couldn't on. Couldn't really get to it. And the building really is dilapidated. It's beyond repair at this point. So it's better to demolish it. I drove by the park today, and I noticed to the left and to the right of it, those buildings have, the, that private property has all been demolished. Exactly. Uh, Excuse me. The property to the Left. west, Excuse me. apparently Disney owns it, so they're demoing it right now, but I haven't been able to find out what is going to go up there. Is, is that part of their uh, GC3 program? Oh, it's part, um, it's part of the uh, street widening for the western uh, off-ramp realignment. 
So the when they take a property under eminent domain, you can't take just a portion of the property. You have to offer to buy the whole property. In this case, they cleared that. They took a portion of the building, demolished the whole building. Disney owns the properties. Um, they don't currently have plans submitted for a project there yet, but it is in the zone of the GC3 project. But it's not currently slated for development. And where is the off-ramp going to drop people off? It will bring you right on to Flower from, from the western and will it be next to the park or across the street from the park? The uh, north of of uh, Western. Okay. So it'll be it'll be or the um, west of the park. <laughs> west at of the least park. two blocks from the park. Oh, okay. This might be an opportunity to acquire some additional land for the park if that's not. Yeah, really I was going to say. Slotted for Disney at yeah. economic times like now, it's actually well, a great time. To Dave, just a question: the sure. property Portland. in question is this. This is still owned by Disney, isn't? That's isn't correct. It? Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I they think it, it. at some point these may be available. No, I mean there are small businesses right. that are there, manufacturing yeah. businesses, right? But manufacturing. Yeah. Is the Disney piece a remnant piece, or is it a? It's a good size lot. It's a good size slot. Okay. Well, size slot. Basically, it goes all the way to Western, though. Yeah. Yes. It's a huge yeah. Slot. Yeah. Okay. But the other thing I noticed is not the Disney property that we talked about, but the property that's on the other side has also been demolished. Yes, they're on the, under the same contract, which they're demoing the, 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 the Disney building. They're doing that, you know, where the tennis court is going to go, they're demoing it for us. So they're going to give us a flat land. For oh, the, the corner. The Com corner one. Oh, okay. Commissioner Ruffle, so you're just talking just about corner. this area here? This um, exactly. Well, I thought yes. actually I thought it was across the street. No, I thought it was that area, but all the way back. Oh, oh no, 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 no! It's right on the corner. Okay, this area, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's yeah, and that's our piece of property now. Driving by at 55 miles an hour, yeah. you don't see a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> speed limit's only 35 over. That's why we need that light there. <laughs> oh, thanks. So. Get, you, get you in a helicopter. <laughs> Saw the bear again. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to cancel on March 17. Uh, hopefully we can start the construction by end of September and have the project done by end of February. I hope. And the funding for this is secure. It's state, or well, it's not state funds. It's county. The state fund. It's a mm -hmm. redevelopment. Redevelopment. Okay. GRA, yes. Redevelopment agency funding. Okay. And the budget that we're working with is about three million dollars to do this project. Great. Do you anticipate any problems with the council? Well, we've been meeting uh, individually with the council members uh -huh. um, because we, we are on a tight timeline. We want to be able to finish this because part of the funding also, we're going to try to use uh, CDBG money for this. Expire. Um, so we are on a tight timeline. That's why Shine has to finish it by February. Um, but so far, so good. We've met with four of the council members, including the mayor, and we have one more council member to meet with. Um, but they seem to be okay with the project. And most of the design is, is really community-based. Um, we have three community meetings, so the design is fine. I think some of the questions are security, um, you know, lighting, um, maybe potentially some cameras, you know, how do you stop vandalism, that type of thing. Uh, other than that, the design seems to be fine with them. And then the traffic safety issue? or The, the traffic safety issue, issue, right. We did point that out. Dave pointed that out to the council members. They're concerned about it. That they'll have an answer in the next 10 days or so. You know, what is it that and what kind of a step they want to take sure. for that? Yeah, there are a lot of kids crossing there. Right, so there's a school, I think, a block or two from there, and they're right. Yeah, there's a, there's a tunnel across. underneath. They run. I mean, I'm there a couple of hours every day, right? And I can see during the afternoon the kids, they come and just straight run, you know, across sure. the street. But now... It's a two-lane street. I mean, it's a four-lane street, but when they widen, I mean, running, crossing, it's almost impossible. The flush crossing, Ben Franklin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, probably a light. I mean, crosswalks, uh, as safe as I think they think they are, sometimes people have a tendency to walk through there and think right. cars are going to stop, yeah. and it could be a lot of fast drivers on that street. Not to mention <laughs> our commission. <laughs> 55 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so a light Fair. may work best over there, especially for if the kids are going to be crossing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you for the report. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, next item. Uh, President Ward, the, the next presentation is on the 
an update on the Adult Recreation Center. Mm -hmm. Agap Kasabian is our project manager on this uh, much anticipated project. <laughs> and so we are we are very, very close to going to council um, with this project. Hagup will give you a, a brief overview of the progress since uh, we last uh, discussed this. Good afternoon, President Ward, Commission members. Um, again, my name is Hagup Kasabi, and I'm the project manager for the Adult Recreation Center project. Just to give you a brief update today, I have a few slides, and um, Council adopted the plans and specifications for the project August 12th of 2008. We uh, advertised for bidding August 14th. We had a mandatory pre-bid meeting October 22nd of last year. We had 58 contractors show up to the pre-bid meeting, the mandatory meeting. And from raise um, show of hands, uh, 47 general contractors wow. raised their hands and they said uh, they will be bidding the project. By January 21st, the bids were submitted. We had 17 general contractors submit bids. And currently, we are reviewing the bids and we anticipate going to council March 17th to award. And we're on schedule to uh, start construction sometime in April of this year. And the construction is estimated about 15 to 18 months, so we should be completed by end of 2010. And basically, the project, this is um, a brief uh, slideshow presentation. The existing site where we have the four tennis courts, we are at the corner of Louise Street and Colorado Street. The site is about 3.3 acres, and currently it has the recreation building. That's about 6,000 square feet. We have the nutrition building, it's another 5,500 square feet or so. And then we have the green uh, area, which, which you see here, the lawn bowling area, shuffleboard, and s the next slide basically uh, takes us into the proposed site plan, which has the 18,400 square foot ARC facility. And also we have approximately a 700 square foot ancillary building that has two restrooms, which will serve the park. We have our maintenance uh, facility there, we have the trash enclosure and the transformer, electrical transformers that would serve the entire site. Some elevations of the project and um, it's a craftsman style project or it could be even a modern craftsman style. Here's a uh, 3D rendering of, uh, of the same project some of the highlights of the, uh, of the project, we have the entrance that's going to be adjacent to the library uh, end of the park. Hopefully, once with a future redevelopment agency project, we're going to be having the connection between the, uh, the Central Park site and the Americana site. If I may, I'll go back to this. This is the, um, the mechanical building that sits right uh, that sits west of the library parking lot the central library is sitting right about in this location this building along with the gray buildings on brand boulevard where the access will happen that will be our connection point from the americana into the the central park site along the spine we're going to have uh, pedestrian traveling pedestrians traveling between this site and the americana site and also the uh, future plans for the library entrance to be relocated to be facing this area and that would be adjacent to basically our new entrance uh, which is facing the library's entrance as well. Some of the other uh, items I wanted to highlight, we do have uh, plenty of uh, green space with the project. We're actually going to be uh, ex uh, exceeding what we currently have. Uh, we are providing a couple of outdoor seating areas for the seniors as well. One of them is directly south of uh, the building, right at the uh, elbow. And the other uh, seating area, outdoor seating area, will be east of the secondary entrance, would be right through there. We do have a drop-off area for the seniors. We are providing handicapped parking spaces right at the main entrance, which would be here again. We are providing additional parking spaces at the bottom of, uh, of, the, uh, of the site um, and ag uh, could be accessed through Louise Street and exited onto Colorado Street. 
that parking that's on off right off of Colorado, that area there, will there be an entrance that people can get into the facility from that side, or do they have to walk all the way around the building to the main entrance? No, the park will be accessible. The, the park will be accessible from Colorado, it will be accessible from Louise and also from the library side or from the alley side. No, but the building, the building. The, the building, oh, I'm sorry. The building has, the the kitchen is basically, this is the kitchen facility and that's our multi main multi-purpose room. So one way to enter, you could go up this uh, ramp which leads up to either the kitchen if you want to access the kitchen or we do have a door or a gate right through there which would lead into the courtyard and back into the building. So there is an entrance through this back area. The other way to do it is walk up the ramp and uh, continue uh, along this path right here and into the secondary entrance or continue all the way through. So there is a path. side entrance yes. also. Yes, yes we do. And how about the handicap parking would be? The handicap parking oh, is right, right up there. We have four handicap parking spaces right here. In addition to a handicap drop-off area, right at this area, right at this location, with an accessible ramp to enter the building th uh, through the east uh, eastern uh, entrance. It, it is a very exciting project. Uh, we're very excited to have this move into this stage, and uh, I'll be honest, I can't wait until we uh, break ground and see some construction uh, action happening at that site. I'll go, if you can go back um, regarding parking, go back a couple of the other slides as well. Um, the, currently, the current parking, we are going to keep that until later phases, so there will be additional parking there, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. All this parking will be maintained. The library parking, obviously, we're not touching. <coughs> that would still be um, maintained here. The, the, other, the other parking lot that they you kind of see two spaces that would be maintained. All of this alley parking will be maintained. Street parking will keep uh, in addition to our uh, Maryland parking structure and the addition of uh, 15 to 17 uh, parking spaces that we're adding to the south and north of the building. How's our budget on this project? <laughs> Actually, we the the bids that we received were very uh, good bids, favorable bids, and um, currently the project is being um, funded through the CIP funds, uh, redevelopment agency funds, and also we do have funds from uh, LA County uh, competitor of grants. Uh, gr so we do have the money to continue with the project, and as I mentioned earlier, the bids came about uh, anywhere from. 20 to 30 percent below the engineer's estimated uh, budget. Wow, wow. Jeez. So no state frozen funds involved in this? Not in this one, no. Oh, very good. Do you think that that 20 to 30 percent just reflects the economy we're in now and there's a lot more people that are desirous to construct this project? I mean, are you making sure that, I mean, that's a huge number to be reduced down. I understand a few hundred thousand, but it looks like it's a couple million dollars in terms of savings. Yes, we do have a lot of contractors out there today who are um, basically willing to bid on any type of project that they can get their hands on. Um, the The range that I mentioned uh, tends to be more towards the the lower end of the bids. When I'm saying about 20 to 30 percent, the average is about 17 percent, which is still uh, a million or two million sure. dollars lower. And that I think um, sort of reflects the uh, today's economy and the, the today's market some of the material costs have come down also yeah. yes having said that though i think all the contractors are watching this um you know, everybody's hungry so right. we are really reviewing the bids at this point dave and the attorneys are re reviewing the bids so we'll do our yeah. due diligence and get a good operator we've spent a uh, uh, president ward we've spent um a lot of time this past month and will continue to spend the next few weeks in in that analysis and we're we're almost prepared to make a recommendation to the council we'll have it for this meeting at the 17th um, in the course of bidding the project we were concerned about this with sure. the architecture firm that designed it they brought on their construction uh, team from inside and did a constructability analysis we then hired a um, um, outside uh, construction architect to give it a second review and provide a second round of constructability analysis and went through the project plans 
and made extensive notations and clarifications so that we could improve the quality of the plan, reduce the potential for ambiguity and request for uh, what we call an RFI, request for information that is typically um, where you have that vague note or, or conflicting information between the um, between the civil engineering plan and the architecture plan. That clarification can then result in, in a change order. So we spent the time and the additional funds to do that analysis uh, a second time with a, a fresh set of eyes uh, with a very, very experienced architect that works on the construction side, not the design side. Um, so we think that we've got a good set of, of documents and um, of course, we anticipate uh, the, the uh, construction process to be rigorous, and we have experienced staff, and we're ready for that. Great. Very good. Dave, do you guys factor in, I know some of the projects that the city has done in the past, sometimes it goes a little bit over budget, or timing, it goes a little longer than we had hoped for. Sure. Do we now factor in things such as uh, penalties or something that, that encourages the construction to take place within that time frame and within that budget. Is that something we also can do, or do we already do? Sure. Commissioner Khan, um, that's in, in all of our documents, uh, liquidated damages, and, and the contractor and the subs hold each other accountable for that. So we, we plan that in, and we have a healthy amount of time in our schedule. Great. Thanks. I think we've got two very good project managers. I think Shahin is going to be helping out with this, uh, who's got a lot of experience in construction. So we're going to be on top of these guys. Great. We know change orders can cost us. Yeah, we're going to big try project. To avoid that. Right. Worked up front, like Dave said, worked up front in the front end to try to avoid as much of that as possible. We we know, you know, how the game is played, so we'll sure. try to try to stay on top of those. Great. What about um, if, you know, in the federal government, somebody underbids something and then they have some increase in costs and the federal government gives it to them, uh, we take a bid and that's what we expect it to be billed for, correct? That's correct. That's correct. That is that is their, their bid and they provide us with a performance <coughs> bond and a bid bond. Um, so they are bound by their bid. Yeah, and the upside to the bids we've got is a number of them are very close. I mean, off by a couple of hundred thousand, maybe four hundred, then two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. So there are a number of bids that are in the same range area. There's some very high and very low, but by and large, I think they're in, in, in a, a range that we think um, is doable for them. So what, I don't think we'll see someone coming to us and saying, well, we underbid this. We need more money for material or something. Yeah. And I'm assuming you guys are looking at all their experience and that yeah, they've done background. this before and their background and history of performing projects and all the other good stuff. Commissioner Khan, absolutely. That's part of the, the bidding criteria. The, we have a whole section on qualifications, and that's part of the evaluation that we've done in evaluating uh, bid documents. And we've brought in, uh, aside from our city attorney's office, the city attorneys brought in special uh, outside counsel that only does construction law, and they've been reviewing the bids with us as well so that we get the right bidder. Um, but it does us no good to get someone who can't complete this job. So we're, we're looking for, for the right uh, contractor at the right uh, bid amount and, and then to get this project underway and take advantage of this this market. Uh, part of their pricing is based on materials, as, as you've said, and the cost of labor. And so the, the sooner we can get this underway, we can get our own mini stimulus package here and <laughs> going. Very good. Any other questions? What was the completion date? Completion date is November, December of 2010. End of the end of 2010. Good. I hope it gets on the street, gets awarded very quickly. It'll be a nice facility once it's finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think the next item is your uh, tennis courts. Uh, President Ward, our, our next item is an update uh, with the Adult Recreation um, Center project. One of the mitigation measures was to replace the existing tennis courts with two new tennis courts. Um, the 
the uh, path that we're on now is to do a, a joint use project with Glendo U Unified School District, rehabilitate six tennis courts at their facility, and uh, use those tennis courts as our replacement courts. Um, George Baltera, our senior project manager, is heading up that work, and he'll give you a, a presentation on where we are and how we're going to get this done. All right. Good afternoon, President Ward and commissioners. Um, we have a just a small presentation for you to show you where we are with the tennis courts. Um, the tennis court project is part of the uh, mitigation for the ARC, as Dave was saying, and in order to preserve uh, open space, uh, the original environmental uh, called for us to replace uh, the four courts in uh, over at Fremont Park. Uh, with two courts there. And like I said, it's getting pretty crowded at Fremont and trying to preserve the open space there. And uh, so what we have, what we did is that in order to see if there's any options, we uh, actually looked at several other uh, facilities to uh, site these courts and, and uh, provide this mitigation. So we did look at an area uh, at uh, the sports complex and it was very uh, expensive. Uh, I see it's over a million dollars, way over a million dollars. In fact, today it may be a little bit more. There's going to be a lot of retaining wall work and other things uh, to accommodate that, that, that particular site. We again looked at um, the original location at Fremont Park. And uh, as, as you can see, putting two more courts there uh, starts eating up a lot of space. We would displace the existing uh, basketball courts, and we would have to replace those and replicate those again and taking up more green space and open space. We looked at um, an opportunity to do a joint, um, a joint project with the school district, and originally we looked at um, a site uh, that actually fronts the Colorado area where they had some basketball courts and other facilities that uh, uh, looked promising, but uh, they required that space for additional facilities for the school. And so we settled in, uh, again, at the Glendale High School site, the site where they have currently six uh, courts, uh, the front Verdugo Park, uh, Verdugo Road. And those courts are in pretty bad shape. Uh, the lighting is in poor condition and maybe some of it non-functional. The uh, courts themselves uh, need a lot of uh, ADA access uh, uh, improvements. The um, fencing and so on is in pretty bad shape. Just the support uh, uh, facilities there is all in pretty uh, poor condition. But it looked like the best opportunity to provide a lot of courts. As you see, six courts instead of two. Uh, the school would benefit from it, um, uh, being able to provide some nice facilities if we renovated these in conjunction with them. And uh, we'd come out better ahead as far as placement. It's on the south side of the city, so this helps. Uh, uh, the logistics for the current tennis court users will be displaced at uh, the ARC. We looked at the cost, and this is just a real quick summary of cost, but the bottom line is we're looking at about $900,000 to renovate all six of these courts. And some of the big ticket items are the, uh, the renovation of the surfacing and uh, providing a um, uh, small restroom to support that. Uh, the, the use of the, and programs there. Um, let me see here. Electrical, uh, obviously for the uh, lighting system, because I believe that most of the uh, support facilities, the electrical main gear plus, uh, plus the new lamps that would be required there, and the quality that we would like to install there to help mitigate uh, light pollution uh, is necessary. So about 900000 for the project. Uh, our main, uh, this is a, an, an overview, a tentative schedule, but the uh, key points are that we're starting uh, this month uh, with um, primarily with the environmental and getting that uh, in the hopper. So we'll, we'll try to take care of that and meet our environmental determination sometime by uh, April. The next uh, major kickoff would actually be the design and getting going with the uh, design. And um, as you can see, uh, our timeline calls for construction to begin 
uh, in January and completion. Uh, actually, it's January 2010, and then uh, completion the following in March. So uh, we have about a year to go on that project before we're all done with all the environmental. We go through the, uh, because it was a joint use project, go through the DSA uh, review uh, for the school district and then all our city requirements. George, why don't you let them know what DSA is? Uh, it's the Department of the State Architecture, uh, Architect, excuse me. And uh, they handle all the reviews for any structural or uh, ADA and compliance uh, happening on state uh, 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 funded uh, campuses and so on, and the school district. So they are our entity that we'll be dealing with. Uh, just an overview of the, uh, just a couple shots of the existing courts. As you can see, they have a lot of lights out there. Most of them aren't working, uh, but they look really good. Um, uh, the, uh, we hope to minimize the amount of the lighting out there and uh, take care of that. You can see some of the cracks and things like this, the irregularities in the surfacing, the uh, sagging nets, and the some of the chain link fence is pretty rusty. Um, I'm not sure where uh, some of this fencing came from, but it's pretty old. There's a little bit better uh, or worse uh, scene. This is actually looking toward Verdugo, uh, Verdugo Road, about right in the middle. That structure is the uh, uh, GWP pump station for the uh, reclaimed water system that runs through that area. So uh, that's not really a school district facility or anything there. But again, you can see the... the would the, that remain or would it be moved? Oh, no, that's going to remain. That's, yeah, that's, that's there to stay. That's a real critical um, pump station in the, uh, in the reclaimed water system. And uh, some of the uh, ADA access uh, issues that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, it's not only isolation uh, fencing, make sure that this is a secure site, but also try to uh, remedy all these areas where we have some real um, grade problems. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, okay, a couple questions. Sure. Would, would the public entrance be from Verdugo? Yes. And would, on nights and weekends, would they park in the high school lot or would they have to park on the street? Right now, we, we're still working on that. We're going to be meeting with the school district to see if there's any opportunity to use campus parking. Uh, but right now, we're kind of looking at the area along Verdugo Road to provide that parking. What is the joint use agreement? There's when, do, when does the city have it and when does the school have it? Um, that has to be worked out, but uh, primarily... It, the, the school district would go ahead uh, and have the site through the week during the school year all the way till the late afternoon, uh, primarily for their tennis team use and PE classes and things like this. Then after that, about 6 o'clock or so, then we would have that, 6 to 10 p.m., we would have it available to uh, the public and then uh, all weekend. So there is actually a PE class that plays tennis in high school? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they have yeah. a tennis team. Um, well, I know they have a team, but the team's going to practice. And they have, yeah, they uh, indicated that they do use uh, the courts for uh, for their PE classes. La last year, when I talked to the principal, we had tentative agreement on 6 to 10 that we would get it for community use from 6 to 10. But they also asked for some tournament dates as well that we would, we would mm -hmm. accommodate them. So right. there are, are going to be some either evening or, or weekend use from the school as well for tournaments. Um, so those are tentative agreements, but we still have to hammer that out. So we'll have a written agreement before the project's completed. Is there a cover over the fence, or is it just open right on? Uh, we're going to have windscreen when it's when it's done. Commissioner, uh, you know, actually, Commissioner Bennett asked my question. I just think it's great for us to look at these joint use projects throughout the city. I know we're doing that with the the sport, the soccer fields, and now with this, this makes a lot of sense. It's just trying to figure out which hours, who gets which hours, and how that works. Right. But, but he had asked my question. Yeah, and I think currently the community gets um, the ARC. I think they started using it about 3.30 or 3 o'clock or 3.30. So uh, there was some issue about the lost hours in between there. But the extra courts, I think, make that up. Uh, right. Instead of four now, or instead of two more at, at um, Fremont, we now have six um, that we can actually rent out. 
These would be free to the these would be free to the public, though, right? Maybe, maybe not. If you have to control uh, them, well, I think uh, we're still discussing that with the school district. I think uh, there could be a concessionaire there. Um, the nice thing about having the concessionaire is they take care of the courts. Yeah, you have over. So is there any reason not to have one? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me very positive mm -hmm. that somebody takes care of it, somebody makes some money, we make some money. Right. That's yeah, controlled. But they don't have money. Yeah, after. Uh, it, it may not be as desirable, right? After that kind of expenditure, you like to make sure that's being managed properly. Right. So it's a good option. Are, are you just resurfacing the courts, or are you going to actually pull them up? No, we're going to resurface them. Just, okay. Yeah, resurface them, and there are a lot of, like I said, large cracks and irregularities that have to be, you know, taken care of. Other comments? No. All right. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we have a public speaker, Margaret Hammond. I waited till the end of all the CIP okay, so you sure. could right. yes, there are you could things. hit on all the points. I know. I'll have to. I should have put it in four cards, I guess. <laughs> I have some comments on all of them. Uh, look at George looking at me. Okay. Well, I'm looking at Steve. <laughs> we'll just, Number we'll one, the timer. Margaret Hammond. Um, You're okay. Pardon? You're okay. Uh, Margaret Hammond up here again. Number one, I'm going to go up the tennis courts right now. Um, in other words, uh, you're taking out four. We're really not getting any more. Uh, we're going to have to share with the school what happens uh, to uh, Dottie's uh, uh, notion that seniors like to play early in the morning. Are they going to be able to play early in the morning on these courts? And this is an area where there are a lot of seniors living. Uh, number two, uh, about parking. You've already got a big problem. Uh, as I say, over there on Car Street, uh, by the car park on that street at the back of the high school. We all know the battles that have been going on there about people uh, not wanting the high school to even use their own facilities. So, uh, and there's always a lot of cars parked. I mean, I live there. I've lived there 50 years. More and more cars up and down the streets, bumper to bumper, uh, on all the streets in that area. Uh, and then uh, how much are the, is the school presently using those courts? Um, and if we're going to put out almost a million bucks, um, how much use are we going to, is it going to be worthwhile for our million bucks? Wouldn't we be better off to spend that million and put in four courts somewhere else that we own? Because I think it's Sarita School, I'm not sure. Uh, we were supposed to have a joint use there, and I'm uh, uh, debating uh, that we were to have a joint use on the uh, facilities at uh, Cerritos um, between the school and the, uh, the city. And I don't know that that came about. I, I've got to check on that again. Uh, I don't know that they have lived up to their part of the bargain that we would be able to use their facilities um, on weekends and so forth or in the summer. I think there was something fell through the cracks on that one. Uh, I keep up on some of these things, you know. And, um, you know, again, I'm just saying, are we going to get the most, uh, you know, for our buck out of this thing? Or are we paying the shot and we're going to come up short on the actual usage? Now, the other thing that I want to bring up, and I want to say it, um, is that park up there. I think it is a great, it, it's a great need in that area. Uh, I'm not sure how many households that, uh, the park up at Western and Sonora. Griffith. Oh, Griffith Manor, Okay. Uh, uh, how many households does that will that serve in that area? And and what kind of uh, are they more or less low income? I understand there's a lot of low income. Now the other thing that's getting that I want to know, the basketball court where it's placed, it's not going to end up like a car park that those people along that strip don't like the basketball players being there, and that the, you end up we have a, a ninety thousand dollar. A uh, basketball uh, court that was poured over at Car Park that we can't use because the people in that area can't stand the basketball players or the balls bouncing. I mean, hello. After we do all this, are we going to end up in a situation? Uh, what is Disney? Is Disney going to build on that piece of land beside that park, and will we then become a problem to Disney? Uh, you know, there's some things we need to think about. We go into this, and it's a great idea. I, I think that that park is necessary. It's the oldest park. needs rehabbing. But let's look at we don't want to, again, put in a lot of money and then say, oh, no, you can't use that basketball. You can't use this because it's annoying to the neighbors. And then there goes our money. And <laughs> what benefit does it do to those people that want it? I absolutely think that 
whoever, whatever we do, we need a light. We need a light at that Griffith Park. If the kids are coming from school, is it Lincoln that they go to up there? No, it's ben Franklin. Uh, Franklin. Ben Frank, 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 okay. I can't remember. I know I've read at that school with my assistance league, but I can never remember what the name of it. <laughs> Lincoln, okay, it's Franklin. But I'm saying that if they come down there and they're crossing that street, uh, hello, uh, you, you think you got trouble with the kids at, around the schools, just think of them crossing that street. I know I drive on that street. I like to go to the 99 cent store, so I go around over there all the time. Um, but I'm, these are just some things I'm bringing up that, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of money coming our way, and we want to use it the best way we can, and particularly for parks that we need and facilities for our quality of life. I mean, that's my thing, why I keep beating the drum, our quality of life issues. And it's great that these park, that park in particular is going to be, um, you know, upgraded and really be terrific. I, I can't say enough about that. Uh, I, I do feel very strongly on that. I'm not going to go into the thing about uh, the senior center other than to say I hope it's going to be no smoking enforced um, over there because uh, there are a lot of problems with that. So, and I know I've already talked about it. And uh, there's no way that it's not going to be enforced, even if I have to go over there every day and sit and see that it is. But <laughs> <laughs> Only on the tennis courts. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not sitting on the tennis courts. Uh, okay, and uh, it was nice having a visit with you. And uh, I do, as I say, I do read things and I talk to people and I like to see what's happening in my city because it is my city. And I do feel, as I said before, uh, I was at Arbor Day yesterday and the night before, and it's, it's amazing how many people, you know, you know you don't realize, well, over 50 years, and when you're involved in the community, it is like a big family. And, you know, every time we lose somebody like Dick Murray, um, it, it's really heartbreaking in a way because we, we become, I have no family, really, here. My family are all from Canada, so that's why I love my city here so much. And thank you very much for looking after it. Margaret, thank you for your comments. Margaret. Would you like uh, us to address at least a few of those items? I think the basketball court. Sure. No, Dave, uh, why don't you go ahead? I know we included DreamWorks, Disney, and that. Sure. Um, you want me to go through them all or just a few comments on okay. what you brought up? Um, well, the tennis courts on playing time, the playing time with the Glendale High School six courts, uh, actually increases over what we currently have. George and I did the analysis, calculated the hours. I've got it down in my office. I just don't remember the raw numbers, but we get more playing hours. Uh, parking is something that we're uh, doing an analysis of in the environmental review for the project. There's on-street parking on Verdugo. Right now, we don't have access to the school site for parking, and that would be one of the issues that we have to evaluate in the project environmental review. Um, the school is putting in $175,000 toward the project. Total cost is $900,000. Um, so the city has $725,000 in the project. That's the tennis courts. Griffith Manor, I uh, don't know the number of households, but typically that park of that size would serve a half-mile radius. That is a low-income census track. It, right. it also has moderate to high-income households. Pelanconi area, so it's a broad mix of residential uses but, uh, there. But it is a CDBG catchment area, which means it is low income. Right. So yes. yeah, it is one pretty of, much a lot of industrial yes. around it, as far as the basketball court. The, sure. In the community meeting uh, that we held last weekend, uh, the community had requested the basketball courts, and when I spoke with the folks from Disney, they were excited about having the basketball court there for perhaps noontime or after work play by their employees. We did invite Disney to the meeting and uh, spoke with their real estate people and offered to meet with them whenever they're ready to just go over uh, the plans in general. So they're generally in support of the project and uh, support of the basketball. The traffic issue we're aware of uh, was raised at the community meeting. We've already met with the city traffic engineer on that issue, uh, met with council members. Uh, Mr. Chapshin and I have discussed it in detail. Uh, we'll be working with traffic engineering as part of their widening project to look at that. Uh, Flower Street becomes a six-lane uh, road. And, um, how do we address that? With, uh, we have to get the signal far enough away from the off-ramp so that we have ample stacking for vehicles exiting, synchronize it with the exit lights on the off-ramp and, and all of that. So we'll 
Uh, we'll be meeting again with our traffic engineer uh, probably Thursday. We've already talked to him once, so so we're on that. Uh, Margaret's taking care of the no smoking at the ARC. So <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I think also, Margaret, one difference between the basketball courts at Car Park and these is they at Car Park they backed up to somebody's yes. home, right, yeah. and once his children moved out and yes. didn't play on them anymore, he got everybody involved and got them to close down. Where here, there, it's against, it's an industrial building, and there aren't people trying to sleep, so we won't have those same kind of issues. Yeah, it did cross my mind, Margaret, and then I saw the big street and residential by car, so... And thank you for coming, Margaret. Yes, and thank I you. And I apologize, George. No, no, no. <laughs> it's always nice seeing Margaret. She knows that. Okay. Any other comments at this time? I think we're park services. Yeah, just uh, one thing about the no smoking. All, of, all the facilities have been uh, signed. All but one it will be signed either, either tomorrow or Monday. But everyone has been signed for no smoking um, as of about a week ago. So we're all taken care of with, with the signage. So if you'd like to go over there, anytime you want to, you can point to the signs now. Uh, I did have one little one that I was going to show, but I think maybe in the, I don't know if, how much time. I think we're running out of time. Yeah, so in the interest of time, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it because it'll, it will hold. But uh, it's kind of a uh, little humorous look at the hillside there. But I'll, I'll hold it until next week. You have five minutes? Can yeah, you could, uh, you could run it, I think. You could always use humor. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. We don't have enough of that here. I know at five, I think they, yeah. they turn off our video. There you go, old timer. Just a license. Okay, yeah, what I call this was Glendale's industrial youth, basically. This is a hillside above this, the uh, Verdugo Park, way up at the top, okay. and uh, I had to uh, I had to climb the hillside at one point. Hit the arrow button back. Uh, I'll stay here to help. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, had to, I climbed the hillside at one point. The lady called me up and said, "There's building a bike trail up here," and she goes, "I thought they'd get tired after a while, but they didn't get tired, hmm. and they." She called me up, so I climbed the hill. I climbed three quarters of the hill. I couldn't find this bike track that she was talking about. So uh, what I did was I went around on Las Flores Drive. Here, before you, why don't you orient us where the building down there is? I think it's a garden plot. Garden the plots down. Yeah, yeah, yeah those are the, these right down in here is the garden plots, right? You know, again. Don't hit the don't clicker. Don't hit the button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He hasn't, he hasn't used the equipment in a long That's time. That's right. <laughs> I'm using my left hand, so maybe I should go with my right hand. Okay, there we go. That's the garden plots right above the arrow there. That's the maintenance yard right there. And the area that, that was actually being worked on was right up here. So I climbed the hillside from the this area right down in here. I climbed all the way up and didn't see it. So I went on Lost Forest Drive and uh, got to the lady's backyard when she, when she pointed it out to me. And there, it doesn't look too bad, except that when the other pictures you'll see, Some they jumps. they made bank tracks on it. They made steps up the hillside on your on the upper right hand side. Uh, there's a sofa that's right here, <laughs> and there's a jump that's behind it, so they can take pictures as the people are flying over the top of them. Uh, they've got uh, several several pits down in this area in here that they jump over and in, into. And over on this side and over on this side, there are bank tracks. They're actually... Uh, we got to hire them. BMX. There we are. Yeah, they are. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. And they, they're, it, those, are, those bank tracks that you see on the right-hand side and left-hand side are uh, heavily packed. They're uh, smoothed out. Uh, they're, there's moguls in them. <laughs> uh, you can see jumps. Yeah, there's the jumps. I actually took the couch that's above there, that that big mound, and I dumped it over the hillside. Actually, and two days later, the couch was back up there with the cushions and everything else. <laughs> so, uh, 
they're, the lady that the only person that can see them is that house that you see right there. It's the only lady or only residents in the whole area that can see this, and uh, nobody. They're all they're all hidden either by the shrubbery on the right hand side from the homes, or they're all hidden by the hillside where it flattens out. So she, like we said, when she called us up, we went over there, and there's the couch right there in the middle. <laughs> so they've, uh, like I said, highly industrial kids. There, we found about found, I don't know six or eight tools up there that were stashed: shovels, Pulaski's, whatnot. It's and actually on park property. It's on open space. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I don't really know how they're getting up there. I tried to figure it out from Sunshine Avenue above on the other side, and. I don't know. They're either going through somebody's driveway or maybe the kids up there are doing it. But uh, there's some heavily banked tracks. And uh, I'm going to be working with, I think, Jeff Weinstein, the, the trail man uh, that we have, and see if we can maybe knock this stuff all down and put it back to the natural green hillside and the water holding capacity. Because the, the only problem with this is the one on the other side, on this side here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let me see. There, there you, there's the, the couch again. As you see up in the up on the top area, up 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 there, there's homes on on the that are uh, there's homes that are below that. Yeah. And if this area here gets filled up with water and happens to break through on a big rainstorm or whatever, the people down below are going to be really unhappy, and they, because they can't see this at all, there is no way they see this. It's so, kind of tucked away. Yeah, they they didn't they did an outstanding job. Uh, so, so Gary, if you guys, uh, if we built this, how long would it take us to build this by hand? Your crew, your cr well, to build this up there, uh, we're, like they've like they've but done. they built that that a shovel that would take about five or six people about two three months to do this because they had to that they've they've dug down three four feet yeah that's where to the make pits, this, that's where they got the dirt yeah, yeah that's where they got the dirt to make the make the jumps with so so have you gone on youtube and found out who's doing it it's got to be published <laughs> no i figured if i came here and showed this on the, on the tv on the tv maybe somebody would see this and say oh uh, they'll ask their son or their daughter do you know about this and maybe somebody will come up with it We'll ask the helicopter crew to keep an eye on yeah. over this area. <laughs> yeah, you can do see you them. can tell by the growth on it that it's it's been there a while for. Uh -huh. I mean, those yeah, are, because they have all, they have all their little, their little trails and stuff, and yeah. they have steps that go up the hill here, and uh, they, so they can carry their bikes from, up and whatnot. Incredible. Left over from last summer. Uh, no, it's 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 pretty incredible <laughs> that they that they could do this, but uh, just thought I'd. Yeah, and that's the. That's, there's a trail that goes down in, into the park. That's where we dump the uh, sofa down into. And they, they're not getting in from Las Flores, are they? No, they're not getting in from Las Flores. They have to come up a hill somewhere. Probably coming up from the park. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The park is really... Steep. Not, not that I'm young anymore, because I'm not. But I still climbed... Uh, it took me 30 minutes to get up that high, and I never did find, didn't mm. get to it. I got to an area that died out. I couldn't. There was no footholds or anything left. So they're either coming off of Sunshine Drive on the other side or... Uh, bike, Gary, that's why. What's that? You did a bike, yeah. Oh, sure, I'll ride my bike next time. I'm going to escape. Yeah, we'll be bike. So, <laughs> so anyway, I thought this would be a little bit different to show, than, and we're going to see if we can well, knock keep that us, down. Keep us informed. We'll, uh, I'm hoping that by showing this, somebody will, will, will speak up or get, you know, contact us. Sounds like a job back. for Ranger Eric. <laughs> you can hear the there drama. Kids. Da, 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 da. Okay, uh, do we have any written communication? No, we don't. All right, is there any comments from our commission? Okay, we're ready to adjourn. Uh, we're adjourned at uh, 4.50.